to show you something. Okay. Because this is this is hardcore important because people are all over the map when it comes to should you do keto, should you do high carb, should you do something in the middle? How do I know if my diet is working? Should I look at BMI? Yeah. Right? That's kind of and, and if you gain two pounds, how do you know if that's muscle? How do you know if it's water? That yeah. sort of thing. Okay. So here's the thing. I'm going to give you a pot quiz. You're going to get the answer right. Okay. But you have two people here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is a this is a male. This is a female. This guy weighs 250 pounds. Okay. This girl weighs 250 pounds. Which one's fatter? Um, the male. Okay. How do you know? I don't know either. Nobody knows. Yeah. Here's what, no, oh, by the way, let's do this. This guy is five foot four. This girl is five foot ten. Oh, the girl. Who, who's fatter? The girl. Is she? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's go with that. Okay. What's the BMI of this guy? And what's the BMI here? Okay, here's the answer. The BMI is just some, 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 mathematical equation that they came up, which doesn't have a lot of importance unless you're average. The BMI is where you take the weight and you divide it by your oh. height in centimeters and you come okay. up with a number. Yeah. Ignore BMI. Okay. Because here's the thing. What if I said instead of this guy's five foot four that he's six foot ten? He's like a basketball player in two fifty. Then I would say the guy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But here's the thing. What we don't see here is the percentage of body fat. What if this girl is a crossfitter, one of those extreme crossfitters, mm -hmm. where you can see every striation of a muscle, mm -hmm. and she's literally almost gonna die. Mm -hmm. She's like 6% body fat. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. What if this guy, let's do a 5'10", what if he's the average American male mm -hmm. and he's 250? He's 40% body fat, which means that 40% of his body weight is actual adipose tissue. 6% of her body weight is adipose tissue. So now the question is, who's fatter? She is. No, he is. Oh. Because let's do the math. Let's do the okay. math. 40% of 100 is 40. There's two of them. That's 80. This is half. That's 100 pounds. This guy is walking around with a hundred pounds yeah, of, of actual lard, yeah. fat on his body. He's walking around, he's carrying a hundred pounds of fat. How much is this girl carrying around? 12, 15 pounds. Oh, okay. This girl is lean. Yeah. This guy is clinically obese, yeah. yet they stay still way the same. Mm -hmm. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Both of them are 250. Yeah. So here's the point. The scale is not the entire picture. Yeah, I agree. BMI is a ballpark picture because if this guy goes from five, he's gonna stay 5'10", but what if he loses 50 pounds, now he's 200? Well, of course his BMI is gonna change, mm -hmm. but wouldn't he notice if he lost 50 pounds? Mm -hmm. Of course, but let's stay at 250. Okay, this is a male, he's 5'10", he's 250 pounds, but he's 40% body fat. That means he's walking around with 100 pounds of actual fat on him. This person, let's do this, let's do, let's pretend he's a male too, she's a male. So the thing is, is that this is the same person, same height, same weight, mm -hmm. but 6% body fat. He's walking around with 15%, mm -hmm. uh, 15 pounds of, of actual fat on him. If you saw them, if you saw, because this happens all the time in California, if you saw two people just walk around naked, yeah. right? Yeah. It's a joke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no laughter. This is why I failed it. Stand up comedy. <laughs> but the thing is, if you walk around in California, there's two people walking around naked, would you notice a difference? Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. This person looks awesome, in shape, cut, as they say, yoked. I think is the word, mm. I don't know. But they, this guy's in shape, this guy's out of shape. Yeah. So let's say 
you change your diet, you do a ketogenic diet, mm -hmm. but you actually gained weight. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, what's happening? Mm -hmm. How do you know if you gain fat, water, or muscle? Mm -hmm. The only way to really know is to know what your percent body fat is. Mm -hmm. So there are ways to do that. You can get them on Amazon. They have these little measuring devices mm -hmm. where you plug in your weight and things, and it, it does an, a kind of electrical current. Mm -hmm. And based upon how much fat is on you, because the fat slows down that electrical current, mm -hmm. you can tell how your percent body fat is, mm -hmm. is doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other thing is, what's interesting is if this person's doing CrossFit and this person is just sitting around playing video games, mm -hmm. okay, there's a difference in protein requirements. So the protein requirements are totally different. The reason why this person, uh, and we, I can, I'm gonna do the math real quickly, but this person is walking around with 100 pounds of body fat, which means he's actually only 150 pounds of lean tissue. Mm. If you're sedentary, you need about half a gram of protein per lean tissue. Mm -hmm. So he would only need 75 grams of protein per day. Mm -hmm. This person, they're working out an hour a day of high intensity exercise, seven hours a week. They're 6%. They actually, their lean tissue, do you know what I mean by lean tissue? Yeah. Anything that's not fat. Yeah. Think of it that way. And your body requires protein mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. So, so what's 250 minus 15? 235. Mm -hmm. If they require almost a gram of fat per lean tissue, this person needs 235 grams of protein per day. This person needs 77 grams of protein per day. Huge difference. Usually when you do a ketogenic diet, most people, not everyone, but usually your protein requirements go up. You start working out. Well, it's 75, right? Keto 75, 75, 75, 75. Yeah. I'm sorry. 75, 75 is keto. No, you're talking about protein or, or? Protein. Okay, that's okay because you're not 250. No, oh. Okay. I'm using this guy as an that's example. So whatever your lean body tissue is okay. will tell you exactly how much protein you really need. Oh, okay. Okay? okay. So if you start eating better, mm -hmm. which usually means you're eating more protein and more fat and stuff mm -hmm. like that, your protein requirements may go up. You may actually be feeding your muscles because mm -hmm. you're working out hard. Yeah. In other words, you gain muscle weight. Yeah. The only way to know is, again, the one metric that is the most important to know is not your height, not your weight, not your BMI, because that ballparks it, but your percent body fat. Okay. That's what you want to do. Now, most people, when they start losing percent body fat, they, start, they don't need a scale. The scale, you can go from 130 pounds to 135. Most women would freak out. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm five pounds overweight. Yeah. Wait a minute. How do you look? Yeah. How do you feel? Yeah. And how do your clothes fit? Yeah. Okay. That's so if right. you gain two pounds and you feel like you're gaining it in your shoulders, you're gaining it in your thighs, but your waist is not getting yeah. bigger, you're doing good. Yeah. The last thing is this regarding nutrition. None of this matters yeah. except for one thing how you are actually functioning mentally and physically. Mm -hmm. Because if you were 6% body fat, truthfully, you might be catching a lot of colds. Mm -hmm. People that have extreme low body fat, they're not, they're extremists. They're not feeling that great sometimes. Mm -hmm. They're easily, you easily catch colds. And also, you may not be having your periods mm -hmm. at this level. You may actually gain weight to 8% body fat, 9, 10% body fat, and actually feel better. Mm, yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if you follow any diet, I don't care if you go one extreme or the exact opposite extreme. If you eat food and three, four hours later, you're, men you're mentally sharp, you feel good, you have energy, you're not, oh man, I'm starving. You know, you know how when you eat a bag of potato chips mm. and then three hours later you feel like, oh man, I'm starving, where are those mm. cookies? Mm. That's a bad sign. Mm -hmm. But if you mentally feel good three or four hours later, if you're not starving, if you physically feel as though you have energy when you're working out, who cares what these numbers are? Mm. Who cares whether you're 130 or 128 pounds? What does it really matter? Mm. But if you feel fantastic at 130 pounds, but you feel like crap 
at 120, mm -hmm. who cares what the scale says? Yeah. You know? So this is this is a challenge because I do this to a lot of people and I'll tell them, 250, 250, who's fatter? <laughs> the person who's 250. Mm -hmm. But it really depends upon your percent of body fat because this person has a lot of muscle. Mm -hmm. This person has no muscle. Mm -hmm. This person's working out, this person's not. Mm -hmm. And you can see how much weight they're carrying, mm -hmm. okay? And based upon that, they've actually calculated how much protein requirements you are. Yeah. If you, you personally, if you lift heavy weights and I don't, and I do cycling and you do heavy weightlifting, actually, even though I'm taller than you and I weigh more, your protein requirements might actually be more than mine. Mm -hmm because you're demanding more from your muscles, mm -hmm. you're breaking down muscles, and protein is what rebuilds the muscle. Yeah. When I go cycling, I don't break down muscle. Mm -hmm. I break down the energy mm -hmm. of the muscle, but I don't break the muscle. Yeah. You're breaking muscle, mm -hmm. so your protein requirements are gonna go up. Yeah. So this is complicated, we'll talk about it another time more detail, but I wouldn't worry about the two pounds unless you feel like crap, mm -hmm. your energy is going bad, because you, be, you can gain two pounds by eating crap, or you might be actually eating good for your body mm -hmm. and actually be rebuilding muscle better than you were with the old diet. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. So think of how you feel mentally when you eat. Because I don't care what anybody says. If someone says, oh, go, go do OMAD, plant-based, and only spinach every day. Yeah. And you're like, okay, well, that's good on the internet, but I feel, I don't I can't yeah. do that. Yeah. I feel crappy. Yeah. I actually feel better if I have turkey and avocado. Mm -hmm. If you eat turkey and avocado and your brain tells you you feel fantastic, mm -hmm. then that's the diet for you. Yeah. Does, but there may that might that doesn't mean it's the diet for everybody. It may be different for other mm -hmm. people. Was that helpful? Yes. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. interesting. Isn't yeah, it? I was ready so, to give up. <laughs> like, don't I was give, ready up. To give up keto. But no, don't give up. Yeah. Listen to your body and listen to how your body functions when you work out. If keto isn't for you, you're gonna figure it out. You're gonna feel like crap. You might actually lose weight, but you may feel like crap. Mm -hmm. Your workouts are gonna suck, okay? You're gonna be dreaming of other food. Mm -hmm. Then try something else. Okay. Yeah. But if you go pure, one meal a day, vegan, plant-based, and that's all you do, and you feel fantastic, that's the diet for you. Yeah. There is no perfect diet that fits everyone. Yeah. There is a perfect diet for you, and you just gotta figure it out. But looking at the scale, when you say, oh, I gained two pounds, I don't know if this is for me, I wouldn't judge it based on that number. Yeah. I would, I would and, and we, can, we can find you a scale that does this, they're not expensive at all is you get a scale that can tell you approximately what your percent body fat is. But even then, the real metric is how you function yeah. and listen to your own body. So, okay? All right. All right. There was, there was, that's my PhD yeah. in nutrition. <laughs> Probably <you>. TMI, right? <laughs> it was good. A little TMI. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs>